You can unmute this video and keep those closed captions on to follow along. I know you've played Geometry Dash, but have you made Geometry Dash? In this lesson, you'll make your first real game where you could tap on your screen to make a square jump and avoid spikes. Ready? Follow along with me. Right now we're in the editor. This is where we'll choose what will go into our project. We'll start by adding a square as the hero of our game. First, tap the plus button on the bottom of the screen to open the objects menu. Tap the star icon on the bottom of your keyboard to get to the shapes. And tap on the square. Next, move the square into position. Let's drag the square to the middle left side of the screen, right around here. Now, press the play button on the top right to see how it looks in your game. Does your screen look like mine? If not, go back to the editor and move the square so it looks like it's sitting on the dark blue ground. All right. In the next step, we're going to code our hero to bring it to life. It's time to bring your hero to life with code that'll tell it what to do. Go back to the editor. Tap the square once and tap on add code to open up the code editor. I want you to change the color of your square. To do that, scroll to the right on your keyboard and tap on the when game starts block. Great. See how there's a turquoise blinking rectangle inside of your magenta block? This is the cursor. And depending on where it is, your keyboard will change. Your keyboard should have rainbow blocks now. If the blocks in your keyboard don't match up with mine, pause the video and check that your cursor is in the right spot. Next, scroll over to the green looks and sounds blocks and add the set color block. You should see a bunch of colors to pick from. Let's tap on the orange color. Great. Now I want you to write a rule that says when you tap the screen, the square will jump. To do that, first tap the white space beneath your magenta when game starts block. Your keyboard should now show magenta blocks. Tap on the When is Tapped block. It should automatically show a picture of an iPhone or iPad screen, and your turquoise cursor should be inside your magenta block. Now, scroll left to the custom rainbow blocks and tap on the rainbow jump block to add it to your rule. Great! See how the hopscotch cursor acts like a text cursor? When you tap on something in the keyboard, it goes straight to the cursor. Now, press the play button on the top right to test your code and see what happens. Now tap your screen. Awesome! You've just programmed your first rules. Now let's add a spiky obstacle. Tap the edit button to take you back to the code editor and tap the X on the top left to bring you back to the stage. Now I want you to add the object that the square will jump over. Tap the plus button on the bottom of the screen to pick a new object. Scroll to the shapes and find the triangle. Tap on it and drag it right over here so it's at the same height as the square and all the way to the right. Looking good. Now I'll teach you how to program the spike to move to the left towards the square and then reappear on the right side of the screen and do this forever. This will make it look like the square is moving towards all these spikes 
so it has to jump over them. Tap the triangle once and tap Add Code. Tap on the magenta When Game Starts block. Just like for the square, let's change its color by scrolling to the green Looks and Sounds blocks and tapping the Set Color block. Let's make the triangle red by tapping on the red color. Cool. Now your cursor should be right underneath the Set Color block. I want the triangle to move left towards the square, so scroll to the left on your keyboard to the custom rainbow blocks, and then add the rainbow Make Infinite Spikes block. It's a custom block that we've made for your game. Now press play to see what happens. Cool! We're almost there. Now we just have to add a consequence that'll happen when the square bumps into the spikes. Adding this will make your game more challenging and fun. Go back to the editor and tap the X to close out of the code editor and bring you back to the stage. Now tap the square once and tap on C code. The goal of Geometry Dash is to make our hero jump over the triangle without touching it. So let's add rules for when you miss and bump into the triangle. We'll make the square spin out and disappear. Then, after a couple of seconds, it could reappear so you could play again. First, scroll on your keyboard to where it says Collisions and tap the When Bumps block. Now, it'll give you a few options to choose from. Tap the triangle. This means when our hero bumps into the spike, we could code what'll happen. Let's add three rainbow blocks in this order. First, tap on the rainbow spin block, then tap the disappear block, and then tap the reappear block. Great! Now, press play to see what happens. When you tap and avoid the spike, you're all good. But when you run into the spike, whoa, it spun out of control! Great work! You just learned how to program the basic mechanics of Geometry Dash. Now you could go back and add customizations to your background and add more characters. Can you think of more ways to make the game more challenging and fun for your players? I'm excited for what you'll create! I'll see you in the next lesson, where you'll learn even more about coding your own games. Happy hopscotching!